What's going on guys, Joker back again once again, and today people, today we are back with more Rise of Iron. But before we get started, go ahead and ninja the crap out of that like button. You already know that your support is appreciated. So with Game Informer's coverage of Rise of Iron, there is a plethora of information out there. I'm not going to cover all of it in video format. I mean, unlike other YouTubers, I don't see the necessity in dragging out a 5-10 to 10 minute video just to tell you that the new light level is 385 pre-hard mode raid and 400 after. No, I respect you and your time more than that. So I'll only cover the interesting things, or the things that I find interesting. The things that make me go <laughs> in my pants. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, buckle up and let's get started. So ladies and gents, you have no doubt figured out that we're talking about artifacts today. I mean, you're smart, you read the title, you clicked on the video, you guys know what you're getting into. So, in year two, Bungie introduced artifacts, and they were, well sort of this annoying add-on. They really didn't do anything other than create this artificial hurdle for stats and level growth. Now, however, they seem to be back and bigger than ever. So, first we'll read what Game Informer had to say about artifacts in general, then we'll get to the ones that they've shown, and then we'll round this out by talking about how I think the artifacts will be used. <clears throat> While players can still use and infuse older artifacts, Rise of Iron will introduce eight brand new artifacts that are class agnostic and able to be freely used with any class and subclass. I thought that's what class agnostic meant, Game Informer. Anyways, each of the new artifacts connects to a particular member of the deceased Lords of Iron, such as Felwinner. Yolder, or Scory. A new character named Terra Karin is the new centerpiece for guardians looking to acquire new Iron Lord artifacts. She sends players out into the Plague Lands to commit mighty deeds in the memory of the Iron Lords. A task that should be pretty straightforward for anyone who engages with the new content. Upon completing that task, you will gain an item called an Iron Lord's Legacy, which in turn can be used to acquire one of three artifacts Terra has on offer in any given week. Over the course of eight weeks or more of play, you should be able to acquire all eight new artifacts. Each of these artifacts has a game-changing ability attached to it, one offers the option to melee enemy units and gain their allegiance for a short time. A second artifact eliminates your super, but gives you two grenades, two melees, and an increase to all your stats. Each of the artifacts can be combined with exotic weapons and armor, as well as subclasses to create new and interesting build options. Moreover, every one of the new artifacts is meant to invoke the character of the Iron Lords for which it is named. For instance, Yolder tended to charge headlong into danger, so her artifact eliminates the sprint recharge delay. So that sounds pretty exciting, but let's go ahead and go over each individual artifact and see what they say for themselves. Memory of Radagast. Described as the first among equals, Radagast the Titan was the King Arthur of the group and strode into battle with a mighty sword in hand. His artifact adds a new ability for sword-heavy weapons, letting you reflect energy-based projectiles, including everything from Ogre Blast to a crucible opponent's rocket. Memory of Perun. The field commander of the Iron Lords was a consummate strategist, and her situational awareness went beyond even fellow hunters. If you bear her artifact into battle, then enemy guardians with full supers are highlighted yellow, and all enemies with low health will be highlighted red for easy targeting. Memory of Yolder. A particularly close companion of Saladin, Yolder 
was a mighty titan champion who ran bravely into battle without a thought for her own safety. Her artifact bears an ability that many players have longed for since the game's launch. The ability to completely eliminate sprint cooldown, allowing your guardian to carelessly charge ahead. Memory of Silimar. Silimar was proud, wrathful, and brilliant, and the architect of the Iron Temple that sits atop Felwinter's Peak. He was a defense-oriented titan, always looking for a way to offer better protection. As such, his artifact provides a unique ward, the ability to dramatically reduce any damage inflicted through damage over time, or DOT effects. It should be a welcome deterrence, especially since the infamous Thorn hand cannon is returning in year three. Memory of Felwinter. The great enigma of the Iron Lords, Felwinter, was an Iron Lord with good intentions, but sometimes questionable and unusual ways of interacting with the light. The Warlock discovered the mountaintop retreat that would become the Iron Lord's home. His artifact offers the most dramatic gameplay modifier. Lose your super, but gain an extra grenade and melee charge, and a boost to all your stats. And orbs recharge your grenades and melees. Memory of Gellion. The hunter named Gellion may have been a sullen pessimist, but few doubt his assessment of the situation on the ground. No matter how dire, guardians that wield his artifact gain detailed radar at all times, and radar persists when aiming primary weapons. Memory of Scory. If Radagast echoes the legend of Arthur, then Scory is Merlin. This legendary battle bar and warlock inspired her allies with songs and wisdom. Guardians who follow in her footsteps and use her artifact glow with an inspiring light that speeds up super recharge for all nearby allies. Memory of Tamir Creepy and misunderstood, Tamir's warlock power and demeanor almost recall those of a controlling necromancer. Guardians willing to flirt with the shadows can take up Tamir's artifact and transform their melee attack, giving it a chance to turn low-power minions of darkness into allies. These enemy creatures will fight at your side, turning weapons on confused fellow aliens. Another melee, a few seconds later, puts them back in their right mind, or the effect expires after 30 seconds. Now, I don't think that these are the only artifacts. If I had to bet money, I would bet on the raid having a few tied to it. Not only just the current raid that we get at launch and the hard mode, but the assumed challenge mode as well. Now, how do these artifacts stack up? What will we use them for as guardians? Memory of Radagast seems like a wash as far as an actual useful artifact goes. It's kind of silly, and I'm sure it'll be fun when you're just BSing around in PvE and not taking PvP seriously. I mean, you can deflect rockets for crying out loud. That's, that's going to be kind of fun. But it's a gimmick. I mean, one, you got to use the sword, uh, you know. And swords are cool, don't get me wrong. I like them in PvE when I'm dicking around with all my friends, but... You don't take it into a strike by yourself. You don't be that guy. You don't be that guy running around with the sword getting yourself killed. It's kind of the same thing in PvP. You don't be that guy. Like, like nobody wants that guy on their team. Everybody kind of wants to be that guy, but nobody wants to play with that guy. So, I'm just saying, I don't see this being a really great ability. I mean, yes, you can deflect Ogre Blast, you can deflect... Rockets, you can deflect anything, it sounds like. 
Uh, I'd be really interested to see if it deflects things like the Sleeper or, you know, stuff like that, Gallahorn. Um, but, again, it's a gimmick. A fun gimmick, but a gimmick nonetheless. Then we have Memory of Perun. It fits in that so close, yet so far away category. One, we already have many scopes on many different weapons that already do this so it's redundant. Two, it's outclassed by all the other artifacts. And three, well, generally, you can tell by the average player and how they're moving towards you after three years who has a super and who doesn't have a super. Now, if they would have combined this with another artifact, namely Memory of Gellion, which seems to give you Keen Scout plus Knucklehead Radar's ability all at once, then we'd be having an entirely different conversation because while it would still be slightly underwhelming, you'd have Radar all the time, you'd have Radar while aiming down sights, you'd have Keen Scout, and you'd be able to see enemies with supers. So that would be something that we could have a conversation about, but that's not what we're getting. Unfortunately, we're getting one piece of something that should be a bigger whole, but it's just lacking. Next up is Memory of Yolder. Another, well, kind of underwhelming artifact. Like, let's be honest. Sprint delay? That should just be a thing. Like, you shouldn't have that in Destiny. The way Destiny works, sprint delay just shouldn't be a thing. And two, honestly, is Sprint Delay that bad? Are you willing to give up an artifact slot for Sprint Delay? I mean, I play as a Titan, so I skate all around the map. I don't really touch the ground unless I have to. I mean, walking is for peasants after all. But really, you're going to give up your artifact slot, especially with really cool artifacts? that are coming up to have a more intuitive sprint command? No, I don't think anybody's gonna make that choice. You're gonna get this, this is gonna be one of those first artifacts you get, and you're like, ah, oh, this sounds really cool, and then you realize that the sprint delay is not actually that bad, and you're gonna be like, oh, well, fuck. And it's gonna go in your vault, and you're gonna collect it, and you're gonna be like, oh yeah, well I have all of them, this is cool. And that's the only thing that's ever going to happen. You're going to get it in your Iron Banner packages. I guarantee these are going to be in your Iron Banner level 5 packages. And it's going to be that thing that you get. And you're just like, oh, well, I got another one of these. I guess I can sprint better. Throws it in the vault. Dismantles it. Now we get to the only PvP artifact that will ever actually matter. Memory of Silmar. Memory of Silmar will significantly reduce DOT damage, and this is important because Thorn is coming back. But that's not the only thing. The item says significantly reduces damage over time. That would require damage over time to actually be a problem, which it currently isn't. I mean, occasionally it cleans up a kill every now and then, but since they neutered Sunsingers, I don't think I've been killed by it. So I think this is Bungie's way of saying that they are returning Thorn and Sunsingers to their former glory. And telling people that, hey, if you don't want to die to DOT, then fucking do something about it yourself. Hey, here's an artifact. Make the choice. Make the obvious choice. Because if you don't, well, that's on you. Now I know what you're going to say. But Joker, what about over-centralization of the game? I should be able to use whatever I want to be able to use, blah, 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 blah. Look at the artifacts that we've gone over thus far. All of them are, well, redundant. There is one other that might have use in PvP, and that is Memory of Felwinter. This artifact trades your super for two nades, two melee, and a small bonus to all stats. The first build that instantly comes to mind is Golden Gun Hunters. Not only does this free up an exotic slot that would otherwise be used for something like 
young Ahamkara's spine or sealed Ahamkara's grasp, but it frees up the last perk in the perk tree, allowing you to choose Chain of Woe or Over the Horizon instead of a second throwing knife. With this artifact, Golden Gun Hunters literally get everything, and all they're giving up in return is a somewhat underwhelming PvP super that nets you 3 kills, maybe, if you're lucky, every 4-5 to five minutes. Now, things like Bones of Ao and Radiance Dance Machines and the Crest of Alpha Lupi become even more attractive than they already are simply by way of virtue of you already get to have your cake and now you get to eat it too. I mean, fuck. I could see some Burn Sunsinger builds liking this as well, more so if DOT is returning to what it once was. All things considered, self-revive is, well, somewhat of a joke in Trials of Osiris or other 3v3 events. So you're giving up a lackluster super for more DOT. More grenades, more melee, that sounds like a sweet fucking deal. The only class I can't see giving up their super is Titans, because, well, Titans kind of are their super. Sort of some, I don't know, catastrophic class rebalancing, I don't see them changing that much. We already have a great chess piece for our grenades with Armamentarium, and, well, Titan melee is kind of a joke. So, 9 out of 10, if you see a Titan in PvP, and they're not stupid, they're properly rocking Memory of Silimar. Next up, we kind of have a wild card, Memory of Scory. Essentially, this is one of those, this might be really broken, or this might be really lame, depending on how it actually works. It does nothing for the user, However, the people around the user gain super energy faster when standing next to the person with this equipped. If it does too little, then this might be useful in, say, PvE. Might be the go-to for, say, a Defender Titan, you know? They're gonna carry it when they're in their bubble, and when you're dropping in and out, getting the weapons or the blessing, it might be useful to have to regain super quicker. On the other hand, if it's too good, well, I can see an entire team of Stormcallers stacking this with Electrostatic Mind and, well, wrecking shop. If that's the case, may God have mercy on our souls. Last but certainly not least is the memory of Tamir. This will work in one of two ways, and only one of two ways. It'll be a god-tier artifact, players will become king of the dead, and take control of near-dead enemies, forcing them to fight for you for 30 seconds. Entire fire teams will rip apart encounters with this by taking control of enemies again and again and again, depending on what the cooldown is, probably 30 seconds, uh, and just wrecking shop. Or, or... It will only work on low-level dregs and thralls. Stuff that I'm most certainly to kill in one melee hit anyways. If it's the first one, it'll be nerfed. It'll be nerfed quicker than quick. If it's the second one, well, that's not really valuable in any kind of way whatsoever outside of a chuckle now and then when you punch a dreg, he lives on one, he turns on his buddy, and then gets gunned down because he lived on one because you punched him in the throat. So all in all, it looks like the two big contenders will be Memory of Silmar and Memory of Felwinter with the possibility of Memory of Scory rounding out the list for PvP. For PvE, it's, well, hard to tell. Honestly, we don't know if, like, DOT is going to be a big thing. Maybe DOT is going to be a huge thing. Maybe there'll be ponds where you walk through and now you get poisoned. Maybe enemies will cast poison now. Maybe things will kill you over time by sniping you. I don't know. Nobody knows. Maybe DOT will be a big thing in PvE, and you'll want to have this on your side. 
Maybe it won't. Maybe this is just being brought in to deal with Thorn and the complaints. Maybe they won't even buff Thorn. Maybe they won't even buff Sunsingers. That's all speculation. Maybe this will be a pointless artifact to have because DOT is relegated to not being an issue currently. But... In the case that DOT does come back, this could be good, especially if DOT is in PvE. Scory is probably going to be a good one as well, just because the super thing. I mean, super energy regeneration is always good. And, again, like I said, the Tamir one could be fun, depending on how it works. I think pragmatically, however... The Galleon will actually be used quite a lot in PvE simply because it gives you the enhanced radar and it gives you the radar while you're aiming down the sights of your primary weapon, which could be useful. I mean, most people should be aware of their surroundings in PvP, PvE, uh, but some aren't. Some aren't that aware in those playlists, and you know what? They need the extra help. I mean, I know when I'm in the raid and I'm, like, scoping in on something and I'm just focused on that, maybe I don't see the thing out of the corner of my eye that I should have saw, and maybe this radar perk will help. But like always, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below, and like always, stay frosty.